All right. I can see myself. So I guess that means we're we're going to start now. I uh, sure appreciate uh, Andrew uh, for uh, letting me present on Anaphomes today. So get the introductions going here. Hi, everybody. My name is Dana Johnson. I'm the technical director for craft brewing for Diversi, which is now a Selenis company. And, uh, uh, you know, Burko was acquired by Diversi in December 2021. And then Diversi was acquired by Selenis, a big water treatment company in July of this year. And so Diversi is now a Selenis company. So Diversi is very big into cleaning and hygiene product products, as you know, uh, and uh, with the Burko line still very much intact. And um, and as I said, Selenis is uh, huge into all kinds of water treatment, boilers, uh, pools, you name it, uh, they do it. They make a lot of polymers uh, and uh, it's been, been a very good uh, merger so far. And uh, for uh, as for me, I've been with Burko and, and now Diversity since uh, 1979. I started working in the lab when I was 19 and uh, started calling on the brewing industry in uh, 1995. And um, yeah, I presented now here, I think this is the third time I presented on craft uh, beer professionals and uh, really like this. Want to thank the sponsors and uh, uh, so, of course, the uh, Encompass Technologies, Bolter, and Gorman Smith Beverage Equipment for sponsoring this fall virtual conference. And um, and, and then let's, uh, without further ado, let's uh, go to the next slide. So what am I going to be talking about today? Well, I'm, I'm going to be talking about anifomes and specifically the ones for the brewing industry. So I'm going to, you know, go into what is an anifome? what types of antifoam uh, are there. And basically there's two types, silicone um, versus uh, and natural. And I'll get into the difference on those. How do they work um, and where are they used? Uh, and won't it kill the head on my beer? I mean, that's the biggest concern, right? Um, well, um, as you can tell from these pictures that I've got on this slide, the uh, the one on the left, um, you know, that was a, a big brewery, and uh, the the one on the right, the Yeasty Boys, uh, that was one I just recently saw uh, on the internet. Um, but if you've got this kind of thing going on in your brewery, and or if you see this out there, um, I can help you with this um, because I've uh, been selling antifoams for you know, as I said, about almost thirty years now, and um, uh, if, if you've got this kind of problem in your brewery, just give me a call. Uh, I can I can really walk you through it and uh, give you tons of uh, you know uh, help on on which ones to use, when to use it, where to use it, and all of that. Uh, and then we'll we'll get into the, some discussion. Uh, this probably won't take very long, and I don't want this to be a sales pitch, but I do want to just kind of talk to you about. Uh, where anifomes are, are used and, and why they can help you. So what is an anifome? Um, so an anifome, uh, by definition, uh, is, is um, going to, you know, break the surface tension. So the, the bubbles either won't form or if they're already existing like a, a defomer, uh, they're going to break that bubble. So basically foam is just bubbles and you're, you're trying to, you know, make sure that, um, that it doesn't become a problem. And especially in, in kettle defoaming, it's, it's, uh, it's a matter of life and death. Uh, with, with fermentation, it's more of just, you know, product quality and uh, also, um, you know, cleanliness in the in the brewery but anifomes and defomers have three main components there's the liquid vehicle and um you know usually like an oil uh in the case of uh 
the brewery antifoams because you want it to float on top. You know, you want it to be kind of uh, not something that's going to go in real easily. So the emulsifier and spreading agent, the hydrophobic particle, and uh, then the um, the liquid does the bulk of the work. And for it to effective, it needs to have a uh, high spreading rate coefficient and have some degree of incompatibility with the foaming media. And uh, the liquid vehicle tends to be either uh, silicone, uh, organosilicone, often refer to, referred to as silicone, uh, and then vegetable oil is, is becoming more popular these days as people have switched to have an unfiltered beer. And uh, uh, then there's a synthetic polymer, mineral, or white oil. The emulsifier tends to be comprised of uh, silicone, organosurfactants, ethoxylates sometimes, uh, uh, esters, and alcohols. The activator or hydrophobic particle is normally made up of some type of fatty amide, fatty ester, fatty alcohol, fatty acid, metal uh, stearates, uh, silica, or urea compound. So that's kind of what's in them. And um, in the brewing industry and the food industry, the uh, FDA really got, controls which ingredients are allowed in, in anafoams. And... Um, the code of federal regulations, the CFR, that uh, these ingredients that are uh, allowed for uh, what they call defomers is 173.340. And uh, that also lists how much of it can be used in, uh, in the process. And uh, so if you want to go to that, just Google um, CFR. Uh, 173.340, and it'll take you right to the page so you can see um, which which ingredients, and you got to have at least one of those in there. Uh, so that's who controls it. Um, but the two two main kind of anafoams that are used in breweries are the silicone uh, anafoams, dimethyl polysiloxane, um, and it's also I've, I've been seeing it more. Uh, lately as PMDS. So it's also called polydimethyl siloxane. And examples of this type of anafoam, of course, are like, uh, you know, carries firm cap S. And uh, the one we sell is uh, Berkel Anafoam 100. There's also a 10% version that um, we don't really, I don't recommend it for brewing, adding to the beer because um, it's an emulsion. But the, uh, the, Berko Anifo 100 that we sell is, was, was still very popular, especially for breweries that are centrifuging. Um, that doesn't have any water in it. It's uh, So that doesn't mean it's 100% um, silicone, but what it means is all the ingredients in there are non-water based. So uh, it's very hydrophobic and it tends to float on top and doesn't take very much to, to do the job. You know, it's around... Oh, about 15 parts per million as supplied. So, you know, very low usage of like one ounce of of it per 15 to 20 barrels is all it takes with, with silicone. The other one that uh, we sell uh, and is, is popular in breweries these days is vegetable oil. Um, and the uh, one that we, we sell is uh, called Patco 376 very popular these days and especially since everybody went to uh you know since the uh hazy or juicy ipa craze um uh, you know that one is not filtered right so um it's kind of important that the silicone one should should really be filtered out uh either through centrifuging is fine but you don't want to go with silicone and run it through a, a plate and frame because it will it will actually blind the filter. So if it'll blind the filter, you know, you don't want that in your body, right? So it's real important to, you know, either DE, perlite, uh, or centrifuge um, if you're using those in the fermenter, uh, the silicone ones. And bright beers, uh, you know, won't, won't affect that at all. Um, and the, the vegetable oil ones um, can also be used in, the, the kettle, really important there to, to keep the foam down, especially if you don't have a sensor. 
uh, to suppress the foam and have the automatic shut off when you know for, foam starts rising um, in the kettle and um, uh, also in the fermenter so uh, if it's being used in the kettle and fermenter you have to add it twice on, on uh, vegetable oil ones and uh, probably both but um, you know you can usually cut back a little bit if you're using uh, both uh, the anafoam in the kettle and the fermenter in the same batch and i can you know take that offline with you and tell you how much to to use um but uh normally on the vegetable oil ones it takes about 200 to 400 parts per million um and you know so what does that mean in percent well percent you just take your volume you know your your gallons you know barrels time 31 times um that gives you your 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 gallons and then uh multiply that times 0.02 percent and that will get you 200 parts per million or if you got a little bigger beer then it's uh 0.04 percent um and that's 400 parts per million and um this is an, another picture that I uh, snagged off of the internet uh, at, a, at a brewery. And uh, look at, you know, if that's going all over your floor, uh, there, there's a couple things about this that um, are, are bad. And one is the late addition hopping. You're going to foam that over your yeast, your top fermenting yeast. That's going to come out, right? And, um, you know, those those hop oils though and are expensive and you're just you're just throwing money down the drain so um you know this can be avoided and i i just can't stress enough that if you're having this kind of problem you're 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 just throwing money down the drain and it's probably hurting your head retention too um let me go back here so how do they work? Um, anafoams uh, work by inhibiting foam from becoming a problem and need to be added prior to uh, boiling uh, in the kettle or in the fermenter, you know, by adding it through the, the whirlpool. Or, you know, if you've got a man way for adding biofine, you can do it there and use less, put it right in on top. You can add it and, you know, autoclave it too. So if you, you know, if you're concerned about any kind of organisms in there. Uh, defoamers tend to knock down foam that's already occurred. Uh, and that's kind of more like in the kettle where you've got foam coming up, you got to get that down, right? So you want to use a defoamer in the kettle. And that's, got, you know, you'll see people using a hose for that sometimes. Uh, but the, the anafoam will, will do it more effectively. Um, and again, kettle defoaming is, is really a... a a huge concern from a safety standpoint. Um, you know, those burns, if you get enough burns on your body, it can literally be fatal. Uh, I want to show you this. This uh, this was an actual uh, glass fermenter of mine that I, I, I accidentally used too much uh, vegetable oil-based animal. And you can tell this Kreuzen line, there's nothing above that, right? Well, it's that, that really just... It controlled the foam and it gave me a really tight Kreuzen line and uh, didn't hurt the beer. Uh, everything was fine. It's, you know, it's hydrophobic, which means, uh, you know, it's going to float on top. It doesn't go into the beer. And that sure made that fermenter uh, a lot easier to, to clean. Uh, once I was done, I just took the little, you know, uh, brush and it took me just a couple minutes to, to clean up that fermenter. Um, but it, you know, the main thing too, is I used to use, lose, oh, probably out of a five gallon batch, you know, probably foam over about, uh, two bombers worth, uh, sometimes even more if it was a big beer. Uh, I don't have that problem anymore. Of course, I'm not really brewing anymore, but, um, it took me a long time to, to really try the anaphobes that I was selling at home in my home brewing. And once I did that, I never went back uh, because once, once you get that yield and the beer tastes fine and head retention is great, why not? Right. Use it. So again, where can you use anaphobes? Um, yeast propagation uh, is uh, a big one. 
uh, that uh, really big breweries use. And where, why do you need it there? Uh, because you're you're adding oxygen. You know, you got the shaker plate. Um, a lot of times it's creating a lot of foam. Well, when you use the vegetable oil-based anafoam in yeast propagation, it not only knocks the foam down, but it also feeds the yeast. Why? Uh, because uh, vegetable oils, especially like olive oil, and I think the one that uh, we sell has canola oil in it, but uh, they contain linoleic acid. And those, uh, those lipids, uh, it was it's like C8, C12, um, Fatty acids are actually good for the yeast. They're they're known to be a yeast nutrient, and so you get a uh, the the win win is that you get a more uh, robust yeast uh, that you know helps build that sterile in the cell wall, right? So uh, it helps that way. And then, as I said, in kettle defoaming, that's normally silicone. You don't want to use silicone for yeast propagation because um, it tends to coat the the yeast cell and it can actually smother it. Like I said, you know, it can blind a filter. Well, you know, what is, what is yeast? It's kind of just a membrane filter, right? Um, and you can smother the yeast with that and they can have a hard time, um, you know, metabolizing uh, the food. So it's better to use uh, the uh, vegetable oil based ones there. Kettle defoaming, the, the big advantage of using silicone uh, for kettle defoaming is that um, it doesn't take very much. Like I said, I'm uh, one ounce in 20 barrels of a 100% uh, silicone anafoam. Um, it might take more, you know, if you've got an emulsion one. Uh, but uh, that's, if you do the math on one ounce and uh 20 barrels, I think it's like 12 parts per million as supplied. So in that, of that, the portion of that, say the uh, silicone portion is maybe 30%, you know, 30 to 70%, something like that. So you'd have to, you know, it's really low. You're going to be well below the 10 part per million level uh, that's allowed by FDA and food. Uh, this is, a, again, my, my homebrew kettle. And once I started using the uh, vegetable oil based anaphone uh, for that, I never had another boil over, obviously. But then the other thing is I didn't have to, you know, keep tamping down the, uh, the hops. And so you get the advantage there is you get uh, better hop isomerization in the kettle, uh, which is kind of, a, I actually had a brewer say, hey, we've not only is this, not boiling over anymore, but we've had to reduce the amount of hops that we're using because our IBU levels were much better. Uh, so kind of kind of a win-win there too. And uh, like I said, it's just a thing like this is a couple drops will we'll do it. But, you know, in, a, uh, in, in the kettle, um, I usually say for a vegetable oil-based one, uh, half ounce per barrel. So what does that mean? Um, uh, an ounce is 30, uh, mils and a barrel is, you know, uh, 31 gallons. So a half ounce is then, uh, about a half mil per gallon. Um, and, uh, that, that generally does a good job and you want to add, add it when you're coming up to a boil. I usually tell people add it about 190 degrees. Um, if you add them when it's too cold, it's kind of lay up there. If you add it hot, it'll really sp spread out and, and do its thing. And then you just, you don't ever, you know, hopefully you don't see the foam come up at all. Of course, it can kind of uh, be uh, dependent on the, the type of kettle that you have. And um, uh, But the, um, the main thing is it's just a lot safer. Uh, then going to the fermenter, uh, where I generally tell people to add the anafoam is halfway through knockout. Um, and that, while well, you're whirlpooling, that will, you know, it's still hot. So you take care of the thermal um, thing to, uh, you know, get enough uh, pasteurization units there above 140 to take care of any 
microbial issues, not that there are any. Or as I said, you can, uh, some people will add it right into the hose and it's just going to float up or, you know, you can add it right to the top of the fermenter if you have a man where you're adding biofine or something like that. Um, but as I said, the main thing there is uh, the, the, the fermenter, you're going to keep the hop oils in, you're going to keep the yeast in, you're going to have a cleaner cellar floor, um, and it's going to help your head retention. And how does it help there? Well, um, you're keeping those hydrophobic uh, proteins kind of in the fermenter instead of blowing them out and going all over the floor, uh, just in wasting money. So uh, I think I've stressed that enough. Um, so don't lose your head. Uh, I, I wrote an article for the, the New Borough magazine on, on anafoams and, and that's what I, I said, don't, you know, I, I titled the, the article, don't lose your head. <laughs> Um, cause that's the main fear that everybody has, right? I mean, that's, I don't want to, I don't want to lose the head on my beer. Um, uh, but I, you can tell from this one here, I mean, you'll get, if you want a nice stable foam on your beer, uh, anifoams can really help you do that when you dial in the right amount. Um, and that's where it kind of takes a little bit of a uh, trial and error. I always want to start on the low side. So say if i said you know on a vegetable oil based one for example and if it's 200 to 400 parts per million start with the lower amount and uh so 0.02 percent um and and that's a good good way to start uh, unless you've got a really big beer and if you're making like a, a, a double ipa or russian imperial stout you know a, 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 or maybe a big belgian beer uh, with a lot of sugar and really active yeast, then you might want to go up, just go ahead and, and start with 400 parts per million because sometimes even that's not enough on those big ones. But a normal gravity beer, generally speaking, 200 parts per million is just fine is a, uh, on the vegetable oil based ones. And, and I said, as I said, with the silicone ones, it takes such a, a, a low amount. The, the silicone ones are very expensive per gallon, but, you know, the use rate is incredibly low. Um, and so with the vegetable oil based ones, uh, it's going to take more, but you do get that kind of uh, benefit of feeding the yeast, having a very healthy yeast that will flock out when they're done. And then, um, uh, you know, and that yeast can be reused, it, you know, if you're reusing it, it doesn't change anything there. Um, but the anifoams really can uh, this is a customer uh, of ours using uh, our vegetable oil based anifoam. And uh, I was just, you know, really impressed with the head retention on his beer. Um, and uh, it, uh, and the beer tastes just fine. There's no uh, flavor off flavors or anything with it. Cause it doesn't really enter the beer. So, um, the pros and cons of, of using anifoam, um, as I said, in the kettle uh, can be uh, huge in, in eliminating boil overs. The, the, the pro there is you can get better hop at summarization. Um, and uh, the kind of the downside on uh, uh, silicone based ones in the, in the kettle is they, they can tend to plate out on the metal, but the um, a good caustic cleaning. Uh, I wrote an article for the Technical Quarterly on, on uh, removing silica and silicone and uh, that kind of thing for uh, and removing removing that from stainless steel surfaces. What it takes is you know caustic, uh, good old sodium hydroxide, and if you use the um, hydrogen peroxide with the the caustic uh, that does a good job of of you know getting that off off the metal, but usually using such a small amount you may not even see it. Uh, the uh, improving the yield in the fermenter is a is a big pro for using anifoams and. Uh, 
as I've shown you from some of the pictures, yeah, if you're if you're foaming out all over the floor, uh, that can be eliminated. Um, and when you know you're really getting close to dialing in the right amount, you might have a little bit of foam coming over um, in the on the blow off tube, um, but you're not getting you're not losing volume. I mean. Uh, man, if you're losing even like a half a barrel, I mean, think about how much that is just in money-wise costing you that's just going down the drain. It's lost product, right? Um, and so uh, when you really get it dialed in, you don't want to overdo it like I did on that picture of that fermenter of mine that I showed you because I, you know, I didn't, you know, it was really hard to, I needed an eyedropper and I didn't have it. Um, so I'd probably use twice as much as I should have. But it didn't hurt it, um, and uh, but you'll get a lot cleaner. The pro is and uh, the fermenter, you get a lot cleaner seller, uh, and you know because you've got to clean all that up, right? I mean, it's going down trench drains and all that kind of stuff, and you're 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 just asking for microbial growth in your drains and so forth, and so it's a lot better just to leave it in the fermenter, and let, let, you know. And they uh, get it tied up in the croissant line and then clean it normally and have it go down the drain. Um, the con of using uh, anifoams is we've never really been able to get a testimonial uh, from any brewers on wanting to say that they, you know, use in an ad, for example, use an anifoam. Why? There's kind of the stigma of not wanting to add chemicals to beer. Uh, and it's certainly if you, you know, make it a Reinheitsgebot beer, you have that, you know, I've got the the information there on the slide about how uh, Duke Wilhelm IV of Bavaria in the year 1516 uh, came up with a purity law that said nothing other than barley, hops, and uh, yeast uh, could be could be used uh, in beer. And uh, so there, that is a concern, I, and I, I get that. Um, and if you're making an organic beer, uh, you know, there are no, I think the only organic anifoam that I know of that was on the market has since been dropped because they were having a hard time um, getting organically sourced uh, uh, vegetable oil. Uh, so I think that one's been been dropped. Um, it could be wrong. But um so that's that's kind of the 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 con of of nobody's going to you know say that they so anyway um, and I, I think though the 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 pros override the cons on on using anaphone and once you get when you see the savings of of you know certainly and safety so safety in the kettle but the increased yield um i boy I've, I, I've had brewers say hey we forgot to order the anifoam and i need it overnighted i got it. it's got to be here you know uh tomorrow uh, can you get that so that tells you that if somebody's um uh, you know needs it that badly that it's really doing uh a good a good thing for them so um yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to wrap up a little bit early today, um, and I, I hope I've answered, you know, your if you've got concerns on, uh, you know, using an anifoam um, and a, about your product, you know, you can always try it on a pilot batch, uh, kind of like I did, you know, showed you with, with just try it, try it in a five-gallon batch, you know, both from a... a you know, kettle and um, fermenter, uh, and I think you'll re you'll really see. And then once you get that that beer, you're gonna be, I think, pleasantly surprised at uh, how how good the beer tastes. Maybe you can even improve your product. Uh, when that's what we're all all looking for, right? Make better beer. But anyway, um, so feel free to reach out to me either by you know uh, phone. Uh, I can be reached at 800-233-1000. Um, and then my extension is 117 when I'm at work. Uh, or feel free to email me. My email address is Dana.Johnson 
at diversity.com. And if you want to read the, I think the article that I uh, wrote on anaphones is probably still up or I can just email it to you. Uh, it goes into, you know, everything that I just kind of talked about here. And um, the uh, website for Burko is still uh, still functioning. So you can uh, go to www.burkocorp.com click on the brewing and distilling tab and uh, you can you can uh, see a lot of our products and things that I've written but uh, yeah I think that's that's all I have I'm not seeing any uh, comments or anything and uh, so but again Phil please feel free to reach out to me uh, and uh, I'd love to love to help you you know, have a safer brewery and, and also, uh, you know, maybe improve your bottom line. Uh, that, I think that's the real takeaway for you today is that Anafoam can, can really uh, give you a cleaner brewery, better beer, maybe more, more head retention. So I think that's, that's all I have for today. So I'm going to give you back uh, some time to your day and thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you at the, the, the next uh, conference, hopefully.